That's what you're wearing to court? What? Oh. Hello, Your Honor, members of the jury. Today, the prosecution stands before you, I know I'm sitting, uh, to accuse high treason, the trial of Louis Real. Louis, Lu, Louis Re, Real, Real, Louis, whatever. High treason of the crime of being boring. I know that's a pretty dramatic accusation, but Your Honor, we the prosecutors have taken a look at the, the bits of which there are many and fussy, uh, the board which is covered in text, I mean even the, the player abstracts which are, which are coded in text, I mean no one has ever read this many words, no one, no one can read this many words, it's an impossibility. We think that uh, as the prosecution, we advise that we, we skip the trial and we just uh, save your time and the taxpayers some money and, and just find the game guilty of being boring and hang it because high treason, more like no reason to play this game. Am I right? Objection! How? You can't object to an opening statement. That's not how law works. Objection! Okay, sorry. Your Honor, oh. good people of the jury. Oh, please. Now, yes, the game isn't as beautiful as it could be. I mean, it has a kind of flimsy board and many bits. Uh, I'll give you that. And sure, there are a lot of words. It's true. But there are plenty of people that have read that many words. No. I mean, I've definitely heard of a person who's read an entire book before. I don't believe it. But that aside... Today, I am here to show you evidence that this game is light and exciting and perhaps even high fun. Oh, God. Despite its looks, the trial of Louis Riel is a hand management area influence game for two players. One player playing the prosecution, the other player playing the defense. Throughout the game, you're going to be going through five phases from jury selection all the way to summation and deliberation. You're going to be using cards to influence the jury and to make small decisions that are going to have a large impact throughout the trial. As she says, it's all about card plays in this game. And uh, as you can see here, each card has a bunch of different sections. During the course of the game, each card is going to have a different effect depending on when you're playing it. And that is sort of a central concept to the game because not only are you playing cards for the phase you're in, but each phase you'll have a couple of excess cards. Those will get tucked aside for closing arguments later in the game. So every time you play, you're deciding, how am I using this card? And should I use it at all? Or should I maybe save it for later? During the jury selection phase, you'll play cards to learn about the different attributes of prospective jurors, learning about their religions, the languages they speak, and their occupations. In Trial in Chief, the cards you play influence the jury, either by providing evidence of insanity or guilt, or by influencing the attributes that the jury possess. In summation, players will play cards that they've saved until the end of the game, creating further influence over the jurors, or possibly even making dramatic swings in influence over the different members of the court. Once this phase is done, jurors will deliberate, and any juror that is completely convinced that their side is correct will begin to add votes to other jurors, convincing them further that the side they've chosen is the correct one. The player who manages to influence the jury the most as long as they can prove their side most effectively, is the winner. And that's High Treason, the trial of Louis Riel. Riel. Forget it. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I feel like I owe the game an apology. Yeah, when we first got this game, I mean, I wasn't very excited about it. We looked at the rules, and we're just like, eh. Uh, yeah, um, it, it sort of presents itself in this kind of... Dry. dry way. I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it, the game 
could use a little bit of graphic overhaul. Uh, it's entirely functional. The player mats, the, the bits, the cards, the board, it's all functional. It's not attractive, but it's functional. But the function that it serves is surprising, and I found very engaging, actually, um, which really sort of defied my expectations when I first started looking at it. Yeah, this game really surprised me. It's got a lot of really neat mechanics, and it's really just an area influence game. You're just trying to get one of these three groups on your side as much as possible. Yeah, you, you know, the the different way that you influence the jury, either by appealing to them directly or by uh, trying to get jurors that have certain attributes on your side. So it's like, you know, you you may say, well, I know that the jury is predominantly English-speaking, so I'm going to try and get the English-speaking jurors on my side. Or you might recognize that a particular juror is going to have a strong influence during the jury deliberation yeah. phase, and so you might try to appeal to them directly. Uh, the, the the fact is that when we first started looking at the rules, and, and you and you're like, the game starts with jury selection, and just, yeah. you know, we're not, we're not history buffs, and we're not law buffs, and so those things didn't immediately, like, grab us. Um, but then it turns out that the different phases of the game have really interesting little choices all yeah. along the way. And little. It is a light game. It is... Yeah, we played it in, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> first game. Just banged it out. Um, and it was very, it was, it was very satisfying. Um, my favorite thing about it are the cards, mm, yeah. because each of these cards is usable in one of uh, four ways, every single one of them almost. And so um, there's this fantastic decision-making process mm -hmm. where you're using a card either to give you some action points or for its effect, or you're going to tuck it away to be used during your summation, because from the jury selection, you're building your closing arguments, and so there's always this cost-benefit analysis of like, oh, this is a super powerful card. Am I going to use it now to gain some traction with the jury? Am I going to save it for later? Am I going to use it as an objection to overrule <laughs> an opponent? Yeah, yeah, I know you're very fond of objections. <laughs> uh, to overrule what my opponent is doing at the cost of not having that card then for my summation round. I, I think there's a lot of like really pretty brilliant mechanics in here. And... Um, and the theme comes through, even though the theme does, does the game no favors, in my opinion. But if you are a history buff, there's a lot here. Every card gives you a little bit of the history. Absolutely. The, the rules include the actual court case that you can look and see what was happening. And you've got a ton that you can learn. Mm -hmm. No, read the flavor text and you'll start picking stuff up. Um, and as far as the mechanics themselves, they're smooth. Yeah. They're, they're functional. Um, it, it's a lot to take in at first, and, and it feels like a wall of rules. But the fact is, once you're in it, uh, you're making some very neat tactical decisions. Like if you're in jury selection, is it, do I play a card that's going to reveal a lot of information about the jury, but that information is then public? Or am I going to play a card that gives a lot less information but then I don't, I'm the only one with that information. Yeah. Am I going to kick out j prospective jurors that I think are maybe going to be harder for me to influence? Mm -hmm. or, do I, or do I err on the side of caution and only throw out the jurors that I've got some information about? You know, the, and that's just jury selection. And that's just yeah. one little corner of jury selection. All the rest of it really hangs together really well, even though there's some complexity there. Yeah. Um, and if you have any trouble, one of my favorite parts is the player raid because oh, yeah. you know if you have sort of trouble figuring out what you're doing at the beginning of the game, they give you advice throughout this. There's parts on like jury selection, um, the trial, the summation, and it's for 
both the defense and the prosecution. And the defense and prosecution get different sets of advice. Yeah. The player aid cards yeah. aren't just, here's what you do during your turn. It's, listen, these kinds of jurors are going to be harder to influence given your kinds of cards, so you might want to prioritize them above others, or yeah. you might want to abandon them over in, you know, if the, if the opponent starts to get traction. Um, Ultimately, all kidding aside, I think High Treason is a game I, I kind of want more people to know about. Yeah. I think there's more going on here than most people would, would imagine, certainly more than I imagined when I first took a look at it. And I think uh, it's not like Mana from Heaven that I'm <laughs> going to play every week, but there is a really unique game here. Yeah, it's really obvious that Alex Berry has a passion for this trial, oh, and yeah. it comes through in his game. It's yeah. really fun. And and that having been said, yes, I do wish that um, it had a very, or, or rather, a slightly you know sexier production. I, I wish it was a board instead of this piece of cardboard. I wish that it was nicer art and its presentation was a little more, uh, a little less austere. Uh, none of that would contribute to the mechanisms yeah. or or the uh, or the flow of the game at all. Uh, I just I just think it would be more fun to engage if it had better art and a little better graphic style. Uh, as we said, that everything in here is super functional, but not not very pretty. Pretty, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be pretty yeah. because it's fun, and and that's and that's that really surprised the hell out of me. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, game. Yeah, we, we did you an injustice. We're, we're sorry, high treason. <laughs> we won't hang you today. Anyway, I'm Andrew, and this is Jess from Gameosity. We'll see you see next, next trial. Ha! Ah! Objection. There. <laughs> hey there! Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, give us a like and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next game.